Good afternoon, everybody. This is Thomas Keegan again with LibertarianProgressive.com. Uh, it's Thursday, August the 30th. Uh, it's about 2.30 Eastern Standard Time, and today I have VoteForEddie.com um, with me here on, on the line, uh, running for Congress to represent um, we the people here. And uh, so we, again, with LibertarianProgressive.com, um, are interviewing third-party and independent candidates, and you might ask, why are we doing that? Um, well, there's a certain principle, I, I think, if, if you don't know all your options, um, how can you make a fully informed decision? Now, uh, whether we'll ever know all of our options, but the more options we make, the, the more of a fully informed decision we can do. And um, I would argue that, um, you, you, you know, there's a 10% approval rating in, in, in Congress, according to the Gallup poll of August 24th. Uh, you can l look that up at, at, at the Gallup polls. That's tied for their um, lowest approval rating, which was 10% before that back in March. So they've uh, uh, hit it twice, and, and maybe they'll go down to uh, 9% soon. I, I don't know what it's going to take. Maybe it'll take until they get to 5% until we get more than, you know, two... Uh, non-Democrats, Republicans in Congress, um, but um, uh, and and the other argument is, I mean, we're in this situation in 2012 because we've been playing the lesser of two evils for the last uh, 20 years or so, and, and and this is what happens. I mean, you get to choose between Obama and and, and Romney, and, um, and and can hardly tell any difference. They could almost be on the same tickets, um, but. Um, uh, we would like to hear something more positive, though. I think I'd, uh, what you're going to hear today is someone uh, with a glass half full. And um, VoteForEddie.com, and I'm calling you VoteForEddie.com because, um, because you're putting yourself out there. You're doing whatever you can to, to, to uh, you, you know, fight for our rights. I mean, your legal name now is VoteForEddie.com. Is that correct, sir? Yes, Mr. Keegan, and I'd like to thank you very much for time to go ahead and talk to me today. You brought up some really good points. That's one of the favorite uh, relying on that 10% approval rating in Congress. If anybody had a 10% approval rating at their job, they would be fired. They wouldn't have that job anymore. And your people need more decisions. I'm a firm believer in the people. If given the truth, they can be depended on to meet any national crisis. You know, we just have to bring them the truth. Yeah, if there was ever a time, um, it, it couldn't be a, a better time for um, an opposition party, a real opposition party, or just an independent uh, citizen uh, to uh, get elected in. And it, it's it's not just up to you. It's uh, it's up to the people. Um, I mean, they're going to be able to see this interview and, and, and realize in 2012 that on November 6th, uh, this uh, the first Tuesday of November this year. Um, people will have a choice, at least in your district. And I, I know you're kind of like in the Miami area, the Hialeah area. I'm in Florida myself, um, on the West Coast. Uh, what what is your district, sir? Uh, it's 25. It incorporates Clear County, Broward County, and Dade County. Okay, great. And um, now, I. I'm looking at um, it's your opponent here. Now that would that's um, uh, Mario, um, and I believe he was. He's not in. A, you have a brand new district. Is that correct? Um, yes. Uh, with redistricting in 2012, uh, Florida redrew its lines every other state, and there are different district numbers now. Yes. Okay, great. And now I'm looking at your um, a, a website here, um, and it, it's it's actually, you know, I'm I'm used to just going to websites, clicking on issues, and and, and just almost kind of um, being able to predict like what's going to be on there. And um, I, I didn't exactly predict when I went on here though. Um, and uh, here's one interesting thing: 13 advisors, um, and uh, it's very impressive. Um, uh, what, what, what you have here, um, everyone from Thomas Edison to Theodore Roosevelt, Winston Churchill, John F. Kennedy, Dwight Eisenhower, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, the Holy Bible, George Washington, um, and uh, even William J. Clinton. Uh, I, I mean, um, and with some quotes here, and and, and why that uh, you've kind of you know let that flow into uh, your philosophy here, or, or what um, you're uh, standing on here, like. Uh, Here's one I'll just pick at, at, at random. Um, 
he can always count on Americans to do the right thing after they've tried everything else. And, uh, and um, you, you know, I see the opportunity, and here's that's the quote. And then you kind of not just put the quote there, but you actually add, like, your own um, – uh, say on it, um, I see the opportunity for America to do the right thing. Energy independence, tax reform, and entitlement recalibration must be implemented now to avoid severe austerity later. And um, so what got you mo motivated? You're a pretty uh, young um, man, too, aren't, aren't you? And, and, and so, like, um, I guess pretty mature. And uh, and um, I, I mean, just really, because I've thought about, like, you, you know, what would it be like to run, to put yourself on the ballot, to, you know, have to try to gather signatures or just to know, you, you know, your name's going to be all public and, and all that. But, I mean, really, that's what life's about. So, I mean, doing what you care about, not being free of how um, others think, uh, being free, being truly free, the, because we are the land of the free, to uh, fight for what you believe in. I mean, can you expand what got you, is this your first time running for office, and um, and what got you motivated to do this? Absolutely. Uh, this I'm for Congress. I'm doing it in an outside-of-the-box kind of way. Um, right now, voters in Groves are leaving both parties, Republican and Democrat, and continue to register independent. You know, the major political parties, when they want to win the presidency, they have to play toward the middle. So the independents have an incredible amount of power. Um, you touched on the 13 advisors page. I want to let America and my voters know where my political philosoph philosophies come from. They come from some of our greatest leaders, you know, on both sides of the aisle and some of the greatest minds that this world's ever known, and trying to focus all that energy into doing something positive for this nation is uh, what I'm all about. Uh, that, that statistic of 10% approval rating, that means 90% of people are looking for something new. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm not, I don't march in lockstep with any political ideology. I don't get trucks from $50,000 super PACs and have to bid, you know, do their bidding. I'm here as an independent person trying to free this country from an economically crippling addiction to oil. Yeah, that's, uh, we are very addicted to it. I, I mean, if um, people that are very free markets would ar argue that, um, pro probably in your favor, that uh, if, if it is so crippling, then perhaps maybe, um, you know, innovation will, we, maybe we should let the prices go to whatever they, they should be. And, and, and uh, you know, that will encourage us to find other forms of energy. Is that, or what, what do you think about energy? Because energy is so important. I mean, everything from our groceries, it, it, it matters because it takes those trucks and, and those fleets or those engines that run off gas to, to deliver them. So if gas prices go up, um, and if we're dependent on that, then we're also dependent on that to get our food and, and our military is dependent on that. I mean, everything is like revolving around energy. If, you know, people really calculate it out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, our economy spends $400 billion on energy a year. Uh, that breaks down to about three or $4,000 a year per household. This economy would be so much stronger and the individual consumer would have so much more money in their pockets to stimulate the economy if we were not paying four or five dollars a gallon and instead had a renewable energy only initiative. My idea is to put the smartest people in the room and give them a billion dollars a month and say, hey, find a solution. Let's start building the infrastructure, the techniques, the technologies that will get us off of oil, whether it's 10 or 15 or 20 years from now. Everybody will be better off not having to pay thousands of dollars a year on a limited resource that just environment. That reminds me, that's after World War II, that's what we did to create the um, atomic bomb, put the smartest minds together, and basically they came up with that. And, and this is kind of a similar type of crisis. Um, I, I mean, that that's not a... Uh, that, well, that could, that will work, and we're the sunshine states. I mean, imagine if all those bailout dollars, I, I always think, I'm not saying this is your position, but uh, I, I mm -hmm. mean, if, if they went to just investing in solar for, you, you know, this country, I mean, it probably would have costed the same amount as those bailouts, and, and that would have reduced demand, which would have reduced prices, plus it would have had us, you know, set... Well, or, or, you know, it, it would be an investment for the next 30 years. Um, I mean, maybe something like that. But, uh, I mean, that's what we should be thinking about for sure.
when you think about it and break it down, it would take 100 square miles of solar panels to power this country. Look at our desert, you know, New Mexico, those yeah. four corner states right there, Utah. You, you build 20 square miles in each one of those states and goodbye $4 gasoline. Yeah, and, and what, Florida, what too. I mean, wouldn't want that. We're the sunshine state, right? Um, <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. I, I mean, we're just, yeah. And, and imagine if people had lower electric bills. How much, I mean, I know my electric bill in the summertime. I mean, it's like $140 a month at, at least sometimes, you know. So, I mean, if everyone had that extra amount to spend each month, um, I mean, in the winter it's a lot less. I, I can get it down to like 40 but it so it all balances out. But, um, I, I mean, that, that would probably stimulate the economy too, big time. Absolutely. Every two years, it's an $800 billion stimulus because we're spending $400 billion a year. So, so we've got to cut that out. Right now, this economy that we went through, all the growth was based on consumer spending and cheap capital. The cheap capital is gone with the credit crisis. So now if we cut expenses for every American, and they have now more money, we can start growing again and stimulating our economy. Now, I, I, I wonder why this has never been brought up. I mean, this seems so common sense. I mean, instead of bailing out big banks that failed, um, you know, maybe we could have invested in, in something like this. And instead of spending trillions of dollars overseas protecting, like, oil routes and, and shipping and, and all, all that kind of stuff, I, I, I mean, um, I mean, it wouldn't happen overnight, but this would get us on the right track. And I, do, do, you, do you know why this is not stuff like this? <laughs> It isn't, I mean, I would guess it's probably because it's filled with um, Republicans and Democrats. I don't know. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, it's filled with lobbyists that have deep pockets that contribute to the politicians that are going to do their bidding. So a common sense solution is not going to be presented. Uh, it's the partisan gridlock and bickering and finger pointing that, quite frankly, I hope the voters are tired of and can see a brand new candidate like myself bringing new energy and new ideas to a stale conversation and really encourage them to vote for me, back my plans, and let's make a difference. Let's make a change in our failed oil policies. Now, what would you say to those people, and I'm not one of them, but some people that I might hear, and, and, and hopefully there isn't anyone, but someone saying like, oh, this person's, you know, idealistic. Um, and, uh, you know, once they, you know, are, is in Congress for like six years or whatever, they'll just, um, you, you know, start to, you know, be like all the others. Like, what, what, what do you think about the, that thoughts? I mean, what can you say against that? The founding fathers were idealistic. Yeah. You know, Kennedy was idealistic about getting to the moon. Do you think these people faltered? I no. think that's just the disgust that people have with politicians, that they're all dirty. They all take money from this, that, or the other thing. And I'm just trying to portray a 100% turnaround, a 180, if you will, from a common politician. I mean, I wanted to distinguish myself so far from a politician that I became VoteForEddie.com. I want this to be a completely new era and a movement toward energy independence that voters can get behind and feel proud of. Yeah, I, I mean, now, it, some people might say, um, like, you, you know, um, you, you know, the government shouldn't get involved in, in, in this and that, but, but they did get involved in the bailouts, and I would say this. I mean, I, I don't want the government getting involved in, in business either, but if it's something that pays for itself, then then it's that's different than you, you know spending on something that's um, you, you know we're never going to get a return on I, I mean just solar panels can you, you know they're built to last for like 30 years and withstand hail and, um, and 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 maybe these solar panels could even be made in the US you know um, instead of China or something, you know. Um, Absolutely. That's how we're going to stimulate the economy, whether it's GE building windmills or, you know, another solar company building the panels. That, too, will drive our manufacturing base. Our manufacturing base, when we put our mind to it, we made this country put out so many uh, planes and so much equipment to win World War II. We need that kind of undivided focus again to, to beat oil, to to get out of no, actually, this I've, hole that we've dug ourselves. I've thought about this. I've done the math, actually. I, I've looked up that, um, you know, a solar panel to get installed in someone's house could be anywhere between twenty to $40,000. 
if you're buying in super bulk, like a hundred million, then you could probably get that price a lot further down, I'm sure. Um, so we have, a, there's about 350 million people in the U.S. There's about 120, 120 million homes. Um, mm -hmm. It, it would it would cost somewhere, and I forgot as I did this math a couple of years ago. But I mean, it, it it we're 16 trillion dollars in debt. This would have costed somewhere around six trillion dollars, and that's if you did the whole country. I mean, right. so I, I mean, and, and you know, you could have things where you you know, it's like if you have a house that's worth more than like two hundred fifty thousand dollars, you know, you get less of a subsidy or something like that. But I, I mean, so I mean, this. You know, we could have done that for the last, uh, you know, four years or, or 12 years, you could say, instead of the, how we spent the $16 million otherwise. Um, I mean, we have to find a cost-effective way of doing it. Um, you know, I don't know if the answer is solar panels. Right now, they're, they're creating algae that becomes a gasoline, you know. Yeah. Uh, maybe that's the answer. NASA is doing that. Let's get more of that going so that... You know, we don't have to cut the oil completely out because we use it for plastic and other things. But if that creates the oil to transport from algae and it eats carbon dioxide to slow down global warming, why wouldn't we invest a lot more in this technology? Wouldn't this be good for, well, I guess it would be good for most businesses. Just a couple might not be. But honestly, about 95 or actually probably about 99.9% .9 of all businesses um, would probably benefit greatly. Plus, they would have a, a, a populace that, that, that would spend a lot more at their stores and things. This would be great for business as well as you know, just individual citizens, um, and, 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 and we, you know, there'd probably be a, I don't, I'd have to guess there'd probably be a lot less military action going on in the world, that would just be my guess, um, and, um, and, you know, this way we don't have to have taxes on, on, on oil and stuff, we could just do something positive instead of something trying to slow down something else, you know, um, and uh, now, you know, there have been um, the fa speaking of the founding fathers, um, I, I do have to bring up George Washington grew hemp and um, and the, one of the first drafts of the Constitution was written on that. Do you think that's something Florida farmers and farmers across the U.S. should be able to grow industrial hemp? Um, that doesn't even get people um, high, but uh, they can make ethanol out of it. They can make fibers. They can make strong biodegradable plastics and et cetera. Um, I'm down on the position of medical marijuana to, and I understand it's a different question with the hemp, um, but I believe the federal government should not regulate it. It should be a state level through the ballot box like Colorado is doing. And you're right, hemp has a lot of industrial uses and the founding fathers are big fans of it. So I really do not have a problem with uh, cultivating that and helping our agriculture industry. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's, if if you do, I mean, then I guess you have a problem with George Washington, right? Um, and me, me and him on good terms. <laughs> and now, here's something I do want to ask because it's not always a topic that's touched on a lot, but um, just regarding civil liberties, um, uh, because you, you know, there there's this balance, like kind of Benjamin Franklin once said, if 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 you sacrifice liberty um, to, to, to get gain more security you'll end up with neither and and I you know I know there's a balance we have to uh, be smart um, have good technology have you, you know good people um, in, in the armed forces and stuff like that but a lot of these people even in the armed forces I'm sure would, would think you know I mean the TSA now is um, you know some can argue doing illegal searches and seizures invading people's Fourth Amendment they're trying to pass laws where they invade the internet privacy um, and, uh, I mean, what, what do you think about all the, you know, privacy in the digital age? Um, you know, 97% of people put their entire business out on Facebook nowadays. Um, privacy is constantly adapting. Um, huh, it is true what Franklin said, when you give up security, freedom for security, you end up with neither. And unfortunately, in this day and age of 9-11, we... Oh, the Patriot Act, we need to walk a fine line between protection and too much invasion of privacy. Uh, wiretaps, absolutely. You should have a, a judge uh, issue a warrant. You can't, you shouldn't just have roving wiretaps uh, blanket the country. Uh, there, there's a lot of issues that need to be looked at. 
more specifically yeah, to I mean, balance out the founding fathers and protection. You, they had to deal with terrorism. They had to deal with, um, like, sabotage and espionage, even traitors like Benedict Arnold. I mean, they had to deal with stuff like that. And yet, well, I guess since before they enacted the Constitution, they might have done some bad thing, you know, things. But even while, during that time, I mean, John Adams is um, known, actually mentioned in John F. Kennedy's um, Profiles of Courage book for um, giving um, one of uh, the, 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 I guess, the, the Brits, to, to call it, I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but but a, a fair trial, you, you, you know, even though they were considered the enemy, and because, and, and actually we treated our uh, 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 prisoners so well that a lot of the, um, uh, some of the forces that were fighting against us actually turned to our side. I, I mean, um, a lot of the generals um, like to quote Sun Tzu, and, 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 and you have, and he mentioned you have to have the moral high ground, and um, I mean, that's how we be defeated the Russians and the, the Soviet Union, I should say, not the Russians, but the Soviet Union, because in their evil empire, a lot of the people wanted blue jeans and, and to hear rock and roll. I mean, they wanted freedom, you know, and um, and I'm sure the same thing is in Iran and places. I mean, you know, they probably have Michael Jackson CDs or, or whatever. And uh, and so there's that part of it, too. I, I hope, um, y y y you know, when there's uh, like, the, can I ask you on the NDAA, do you think that went too far, sir? Um, this of the national defense yeah, authorization, of where the president can go ahead and designate anyone they want, an enemy combatant, and hold them without trial? Yeah, do you think George Washington would have voted for that? I don't think so. Yeah. And, you know, it it scares me, and it should scare everyone. You know, the president can take that away from me. I, I could be designated tomorrow. You know, Obama or Bush or whoever, any president in office can say this person I don't like what he's saying. He should stop saying it. Let's let's lock him up for a while. An he, indetermined amount of time, indef indefinite. Yeah, without a lawyer, without like knowing mm -hmm. your charges or your accusers or the evidence against you. I mean, it's definite. It, go, it goes against the, the speedy trial. I mean, just people need to pull out the Constitution and read it and 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 and, and know why it's there. I, I mean, there's a reason why those laws are and i don't think we really needed um those i mean is it so much to get a judge's approval um is it you know when when like nine times out of ten they 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 authorize the, the wiretaps anyways with it it's just good knowing that there's someone looking over it for that one percent scenario where they might say eh, you know this i just would like a little more information about this one out of a hundred times or one out of a thousand times you know um and unfortunately, though, we've got to be right 100% of the time. They, they only have to be right once when it is in regards to terrorism. You know, my, my, my problem with the NDAA is that it strips citizens of their rights. You know, our enemy combatants that we get on the field of war, the Afghanistan, the Iraq, those, that has to be treated a little differently, but those aren't United States citizens getting their rights taken away from them. Yeah, it, I, I mean that—that's one, one part of it too. I, I mean, now, um, so I, I, I do. So, um, would it be safe to say, like, if if you had, a, do you know how you would have voted on that? Would you voted against that? Another problem with our Congress is they attach bills to other bills to make it to pass. If they can't pass on its own merit, attaching it to a defense spending bill so that it passes is cowardly. So laws need to stand up on their own merit, not because it's attached to a better law or a spending bill. I agree. So, would you stand up? I mean, would you champion why it's wrong and, 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 and you know, um, before they voted on it and try to influence it? I mean, um, uh, I guess Absolutely. Yeah, you'll have to, you know, work with, with, with people and, and build coalitions, of course. And um, so what do you think? Um, I, I mean, I guess, you know, everyone asks the president what they do their first 100 days. What, what would you imagine it being like your first 100 days of Congress, uh, sir? Uh, if I win, if I'm as an independent candidate able to garner enough votes to beat a four-term Republican congressman, I feel that I would enter with a lot of political capital and a lot of backing from the voters to be able to implement my program of energy independence, getting the smartest people in the room, figuring out a plan and start implementing it. That would be my priority, my first hundred days, my first two years, six years. Everything is about energy independence and our economy will be better, our country will be safer. It all starts there. 
Yeah, I, I, that that is a huge, huge issue. I, I think it's, um, you, you know, that's pretty smart to, you know, focus on such a very important issue. It's kind of like Ron Paul was focusing on the Federal Reserve, you know, this could be your big issue. And, um, and uh, the, you know, just out of an example, I mean, not to say you wouldn't champion and look into other things, but this everything, you know, is symbiont, it kind of relates to it because my grocery store prices are directly affected by energy and um and so is everything else um now um i do also notice on here you said like in in the issue section tea party and occupy wall street listing these two moments in the same breath is odd and the idea that they may be able to work toward a common goal and then I'll just let you continue from there. What 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 did you mean by that? I think that's very interesting, and and, and that's I've thought similar thoughts. I, I mean, you got you, you, people are unhappy right now, and there's a Tea Party and an Occupy Wall Streets. Well, absolutely, Occupy Wall Street. You know, they claim they claim them 99 percent rallying against the one percent. Um, I want to adjust that a little bit and say, Occupy Wall Street. Why don't we battle probably the evilest, most destructive industry there is, oil. And that's going to benefit 99% of people have a lower bill. So you're not then, scared to take on oil at all, right? You're rather stand up for the truth. I mean, that's a big industry with a lot of power and, you know. And, and I'm hoping voters see the courage that I'm trying to do here when so many, when ExxonMobil owns so many congressmen, that there's one person trying to do something right for them, one guy out of 135 that's going to be focused on fixing this issue. I, I really hope they'll give me the benefit of the doubt and I can earn their vote, their trust, their donations. Um, and then continuing with your question, the Tea Party did not rally against government taxes. A third party tax, the East India Trading Company taxing their tea. Right now, oil companies and OPEC are taxing us through embargoes, uh, regulating how much oil they produce. So Tea Party needs to look at not domestic enemies, but foreign enemies that are hurting us right now. And if both those parties focus on that, we'd be a much better country for it. Yeah, it is like a tax. It's like a tax when they fix the markets and, 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 and can play with the market and stuff. That's definitely a tax. Um, and um, it's a tax, and, and it's a tax, A-T-T-A-C-K-S. And um, so I guess a tax is an attack. And, uh, yeah. and, 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 and if, if they, you want to know what they think about us, I mean, just remember BP, I mean, they pretty much are using our Gulf like you know what and um, so um, and uh, well, well um, let me think of some other issue now uh, this is very, very impressive I, I had another thought so I'll have to get back to it if I don't remember but um, I'm on your website right now though vote v-o-t-e f-o-r-e-d-d-i-e dot com uh, vote for Eddie dot com and people can uh, contribute. Uh, they contribute uh, by donating money. Um, they can contribute by uh, if, if you have a place where, you know, I assume where, where you can have a speech or some kind of meet and greet or town hall or something like that. Someone who has an organization because it looks like um, you're the only uh, independent. I mean, there's no Green Party or Libertarian running against you. I mean, it's just you against a Republican. And do you also are you also running against the Democrats? No, that, that's of this race, and uh, the Democrats were too afraid to run someone versus this Republican. So the Democrats chose not to, and he would have been elected again without any competition. And I don't think that's America. I don't think that's uh, the correct way to do it. So I'm throwing my hat in the ring to uh, have an option, not just the same Republican running unopposed. Yeah, I think if you're a Tea Partier um, and, uh, you, you know, wherever you are, just an independent, I mean, that, after all, is the biggest voting block of registered voters. Uh, it's Why not? I mean, if it's not this year, I mean, what what's going to happen? I mean, we, we, can, can you imagine another four years of, of just this, you, you know, this trend that's been happening since, you, you know, as long as we can remember almost? I mean, can, can we... Uh, I mean, what's it going to take? Uh, I mean, until Congress has a 0% approval rating? I hope not. I mean, we're right there at 10%. I think this year I feel things stirring. And, I mean, if we want to occupy Wall Street, how about let's occupy what we rightfully own, which is Congress, um, and, uh, and, and have a Tea Party there? 
I guarantee you I have more in common with the average voter than any Republican, any congressman right now. Uh, career politicians are ruining our government right now. I, I, I think it'd be kind of fun and, and it'd be a, a, a breath of fresh air um, to a blast of fresh air to um, you, you know have someone here with the spirit of 1776 um, basically uh, you know, as 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 your elected representative in this 25th district, I mean, I can't see anything. I don't see any. Uh, I, I'm trying to weigh the pros and the cons, and I, I don't see any cons. Um, I do sense that there's some urgency. I'm comparing you to the status quo, and it seems a lot better. I I, I guess it's just a matter of uh, rapport, or what's left. I mean, or just uh, self confidence and self esteem. I, I I mean, if now, are you guys going to have any debates? Is that something people? Are going to need a pressure um, the media on or, or uh, do you have some set up? Um, I certainly have some media contacts and I'm going to be putting out some press releases in the upcoming weeks on some very neat things uh, that I've been doing on my website and some of my other plans that I'm announcing. Uh, as far as debates go, I, I don't think he would ever give me the time of day. I mean, Just because he's so established and I'm so third party, it, it'd be real interesting to get that done. Yeah, that should speak for itself. Um, I, I mean, now I'm looking at his record. He did. He he didn't vote for the NDAA because he had a no vote, so he didn't even show up for that. And, and for such a important um, uh, piece of legislation, um, and, uh, and 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 if I mean, what does it say? A politician that doesn't vote is like. I don't know, a mechanic that doesn't check the oil or, or something. I mean, why, just... why did we send you there? We, we deserve your opinion on important matters. Yeah. And you didn't even vote. That, that's amazing. Yeah, he didn't even vote, and and and, it, and and if he doesn't show up to these debates, I mean that's a reason right there not to. Uh, I mean anyone who has a, someone they're running against. Um, well, Eddie, it's uh, been a pleasure. I mean, it's been an an, an honor, um, and, and so, <laughs> like um, any closing thoughts, like uh, what what's um, you, you know your vision, and, um, and 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 what do people need, need to know? I, I mean, it, it's uh, that um, what what got. I mean, you're you're not just voting for something champion so when you're actually you, you know uh on the ballots so um i guess we just need some of that uh, same spirit that got you to to, to run in, in the same thing because it, it absolutely is um uh, I'm, I'm the man right? in the arena you know there's critics and i might stumble but i'm putting myself out there into this political arena trying to do some good for this country um it's you know, we can't escape the responsibility of tomorrow by evading it today. Our oil dependence is only going to get worse. We're only, our Social Security and Medicare are going to continue growing and, be, and eat up more of the federal budget year by year. Uh, the $16 trillion in debt that we have, we got to get that under control. Uh, in 2000 or the early 90s, Clinton and a Republican Congress made a budget where we were running surpluses and we would have paid them the debt. So in this 12 years to go from that great plan to $16 trillion in debt is a travesty. It was bipartisan. That's something we got to go back and look at again. Oh, there's been so many bipartisan things. I, I mean, the Obamacare, the, um, you, you know, bailing out uh, big um, uh, corporate insurance companies um, and uh, the, the bailouts, um, that was bipartisanship. The Medicare, where they can't even um, negotiate uh, prescription prices, buying in bulk. I mean, every a lot of things, all the worst things are done by partisanship. It's, it's the Republicans who always, you, you know, spend the deficits and the, it's the Democrats who always violate our civil liberties. I mean, we always get the opposite. Uh, it's kind of Orwellian in, in a sense. I do remember what I wanted to ask because it's such an important um, issue for a lot of people. I mean, it's just basically, it, it's taxes. I, I mean, what, what do you think about taxes? What do you think about taxes for middle class and, 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 um, and small businesses? And uh, what, 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 do you have any thoughts on that real quick? Absolutely. I'm glad you asked. Um, I'm, I'm a fan of and Bowls, where they had a plan that would pretty much lower everybody's tax rate, but they'd cut out some loopholes, and we would generate enough revenue and make enough cuts and adjustments that it would be $4 trillion over 10 years. And if this economy was rocking and rolling underneath the 1990 tax packets, uh, there's no reason why we can't do well underneath, you know, even lower tax brackets, but that actually generate enough revenue to pay our bills. 
All right. Sounds good. I, yeah. Another another thing, if I've got one more second, I'd love to mention. Uh, the other piece of legislation uh, that I have there is tax, tax relief for emergency responders, army, and teachers. Right, I'm These sorry. The, the, it it kind of is cutting out there. Can you say that again, oh. the, the last part, um, sir? Uh, yes. Uh, my other legislation that I would push is my TREAT Act, tax relief for emergency responders, armed forces, and teachers. And what that would do is they're always constantly getting their budgets cut by state bill level would actually give them uh, tax cuts based on how many years of service they've done for their community or anywhere between five and 10% if they've been in their fields for 20 or more years. And I feel like that would really incentivize you know, our young generation to give back to their communities, to become a teacher and carry on this tax break and become successful or a police officer or volunteer for armed forces. And they just they deserve so much credit that I want to do something special for them because their salary and benefits are constantly getting cut and they really are the backbone of this country. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Um, and, and you can read all about that at uh, voteforeddy.com. And um, uh, I, you know, just weighing this out, um, you know, just seems like common sense. And, uh, and, and that's, you know, what this country was built on. And, 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 and you know, it would be good to have some common sense introduced into the House of Representatives. Um, Eddie for, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, voteforeddie.com. It's been a pleasure. Um, uh, my friend and uh, good talking to you and um, uh, we look forward to you, you know seeing h how you do and uh, so everyone in the 25th district uh, spread the word uh, help yourselves by helping Eddie out uh, thank you very much Eddie and I'll say goodbye to you right uh, when, when we end this here all right sir thank you so much for the opportunity I appreciate it thank you